If you're anything like me, when you first started to learn how to code, it was a really fun time. You buy tons of learning resources, maybe you buy some books on Amazon, maybe you bought some online courses and you just start devouring as much information as you can. It becomes your life. It's so exciting, there's so much potential. You're gonna change careers, it's awesome. However, what most people find is that after a month or two months or three months, they start to realize that their strategy is not really moving them closer to becoming a programmer. They're consuming a lot of information, but at the end of the day, they don't feel like they're getting anywhere with it. So in this video today, what I wanted to cover with you are three horrible mistakes that I see people make when it comes to studying, like terrible strategies that most people take that actually are counter productive. So we'll cover those and also how to overcome them. Now, if you're new here and you're wondering who I am, I'm Andy Sterkwitz. I'm a self-taught programmer. I taught myself to code back in 2014. I landed a job in 2015. And now I mentor and coach people who are looking to do the same thing, to change careers and get into this field. So if you're interested in content like that, I highly recommend hitting the subscribe button below. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. The first horrible strategy that I notice for a lot of people is that they focus too much on the quantity of hours over the quality of hours studied. You'll see this a lot where people will say, I'm working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, I'm studying full time on this. And they don't actually, they can't admit to themselves that actually at that level, that, that that many hours per week, that their quality of study time actually goes down, right? Because the longer you go with this, the more likely you are to succumb to distractions, the less likely you are to retain some of that information, and the more distracted you'll probably be. So what I emphasize and what I recommend to people is instead of having long duration study periods that are of low intensity, right? So instead of studying for four hours, five hours, six hours straight, and maybe not really being focused the whole time, I say shorten that into smaller bursts that are higher intensity, shorter duration. So what I recommend is anywhere from 30 minute study periods to an hour and always taking a break in between there depending on how much time you need to recover mentally and making sure that when you're in that study period, when you're in that study session, you are single tasking, meaning there are no distractions. You are doing one thing at a time. You are not allowing for people to interrupt you. You're not allowing for distractions like the internet, right? Like you're not allowing for uh, Twitter or Facebook notifications or phone calls or anything like that. Anything that's going to distract you while you're in a deep state of focus is going to bring you out and make it makes you have to basically restart from the beginning so make sure to not focus so much on the quantity there are plenty of people out there who are doing this on 20 hours per week but when they do those 20 hours they are there they're present they're fully engaged and they're not being distracted as opposed to trying to do this for 50 60 hours per week you're more likely to find less pleasure in this because you're sacrificing so much time from other parts of your life so don't make that mistake. Don't think you have to put in 100 hours, 80 hours, 60, or even 40 hours per week. You can put in much less, but you just have to make sure that each hour you put in is of high impact. The second learning strategy that I think is just horrible is an excessive emphasis on memorizing syntax. This comes from a lot of people who, like you kind of remember going to school, having to fill out like Scantron forms, memorizing a bunch of stuff, and having to fill it out for the test, right? And so when that translates to learning to code, we think that we have to remember a bunch of concepts. We have to remember a bunch of rules about how a programming language works and that that's all we have to do. So we spend all of our time reading books, maybe rereading them, underlining key concepts, highlighting things. And so we focus so much on that and not really understanding what programming is all about. Now I just wanna be clear here, understanding syntax and understanding how the, the ins and outs of a programming language are, they're important, but that's not all there is to being a programmer. As I've said in another video, the most important thing as a programmer is to understand how to solve a problem using code. It's how to understand how to, how to create logic and then implement that logic with the programming language. So for most of you guys, this is a really good metaphor for you. If you had a hammer, okay, so a hammer is very similar to a programming language. It's a tool to help you solve a problem. And in this case, if you, so let's say you took a course on a hammer, how to hold a hammer, how to swing a hammer, you had the most advanced courses about how to hammer a nail in, and you knew everything about that hammer. Well, that doesn't mean that you're qualified to somehow build a house. And that's about as good a metaphor as I could think of, because just because you know the ins and outs of a programming language doesn't mean that you can build an application. It just means you know the tool very well. So definitely make sure that you understand the syntax, that you learn the syntax, but don't think that you have to memorize it and that you can never look anything up or anything like that. Instead, 
understand the syntax, then move on to building applications, working through coding problems, and that's gonna be much more effective in actually making you a programmer. And the third and final strategy that you wanna avoid here is not applying what you've learned. You gotta remember that coding, that programming is about creation. You're creating solutions to problems. And so if you've done all this work, if you've studied for quite a long time and you've learned syntax and you've remembered a lot of concepts, but you can't actually produce a result, you can't produce a small application, or you can't work through some coding challenges, then you technically can't do it. Like you can't be a programmer, you're not a programmer. And if you can't do something with what you know, then you don't know it. You don't actually know how to do it. Think of it this way. Does someone who has studied classical literature, or who's a classical literature expert, does that make them a good writer? Or would somebody be a good writer if they spent four or five years of their life just writing, writing, writing without having maybe professional instruction? Another example is, could you play Texas Hold'em if you just read a really good book about how to play Texas Hold'em? Or would it be better if you played thousands and thousands of games and just got experience that way and then went and read the book? Right, so my point here is that if you're gonna become a programmer, you actually have to program. You can't spend all of your time just memorizing concepts, memorizing uh, syntax, as I've said before, you actually have to apply it. So if you watch my videos, you know what I'm gonna say here. I'm gonna say, number one, you have to build projects. So you have to put projects in your portfolio. You need to work on projects starting at your level. So start with stuff that's simple. Build you know the simple to-do apps, build a clock application, and move on up from there and build it more and more challenging to the point where you can be seriously considered for a position as a software developer. Not only that, you can also work through coding challenges. There are many websites out there now that are free where you can practice your coding skills. They'll give you challenges and you can just start working through that. If you don't know which one to pick, I highly recommend edibit.com if you're a beginner. It has a great user interface. It's very easy to use. You can start out at super simple problems. You can work your way up to harder problems, but it can get you to practice the fundamentals of programming. So keep that in mind. You wanna make sure you're always applying this. You don't just wanna to read tons of information or watch tons of tutorials without taking the information that you've gleaned from that and then applying it somewhere, whether that's coding challenges or your own projects. If you just read, if you just consume information all the time, then it's good chance that a lot of it's not going to stick and you're also not going to be able to do the actual work of a software developer. So I hope this video has helped. These three things are so prevalent and they've caused so many people to not be able to become a programmer and I hope it's helped you. So if it has, please be sure to leave a like below. And by the way, guys, for those of you who are actually looking to change careers and be a programmer, so you're learning to code to become a software developer, I highly recommend checking out my mentorship program where you can work with me one-on-one -on -one to help get to that level. If you are interested in joining my mentorship program, what I recommend you do is book a free career strategy session. I will leave a link in the description below. During that call, what we're going to do is number one, I'm going to figure out what your goals are. I'm going to figure out what exactly it is you want to do. I'm going to help you to figure out what things are holding you back from where you want to go. And from there, we can decide whether the program is a good fit for you. So I highly recommend jumping on that as soon as possible. Other than that, guys, thank you so much as always for watching and peace out guys.